Hello teachers, welcome to section 13-2, part 2. So if you haven't watched part 1, please go back and watch part 1. We actually finished this problem on the left where we found the area of a parallelogram. And we're, we did not finish this second problem, so it's a good place to start. In 13-2, I know you know this already, we are talking about area and units of measure in area and converting from one unit to another unit, but all dealing with area. And so the second one, of course, is a triangle, right? We know the formula for the area of a triangle is area is equal to one half the base times the height. You remember where that formula came from? Well, a triangle is half of a parallelogram. And so there you go. This, If we flipped this like there's a mirror right there, then we would get the other part of this parallelogram over here, which we just found the area of one over here. Okay. Um, but let's do this. So half the base times the height. So I have area is one half. My base is this line segment across the bottom AC, which is 10 centimeters, times my height right here, 4 centimeters. Now, if you want to make your life a little easier, you could go ahead and take half of 10. That's perfectly okay to do because you're multiplying. I've got 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters. And we know 5 times 4 is 20. We also know that centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared and I'm trying to move the video screen around. Sorry about that. If I accidentally grab the screen or get too close to the edge, it'll start moving around. So 20 centimeters squared should be your result there. And so you feel super confident about it. There's the 20 centimeters squared typed up for you. I've got a third one. Here we go. So why don't you pause the video, knock this one out real quick, just to be absolutely confident that you know how to do these problems. You need to know how to find these areas on your own. So did it go okay? So remember, this is a triangle. We're just finding the area of the black figure at the bottom. So once again, area is one half. The base times the height. I encourage you to write the formula down every single time you use it and for your students as well. All right, so this is one half. Notice the base. Remember when we talked about the base of a parallelogram? It's what the height comes to. So look, the height of this triangle is coming to this side. So our base is 2 centimeters. The height of this triangle is 4 centimeters. We could do the, our cute little trick and take half of 2. So that leaves us with 1 centimeter times 4 centimeters, which is 4 centimeters squared. And our confidence typed up answer, there we go. Now how about the area of a kite? So the area of a kite can be found by relating it to the area of a rectangle. This is pretty neat. Look at this depiction. They decomposed the kite. Notice they put one and two together, and that got a rectangle, and then three and four got a, a separate rectangle. And notice that D1, that is your diagonal, right? One of your diagonals for your kite, that's that distance. And then D2 is your second diagonal. That gives you the height of this long rectangle over here. So pretty cool. The area of a kite is just one half diameter one times diameter two. I really like that. I think that's very cool. All right, so area of a trapezoid, I bet you've seen this before. So you have areas one half the height times in parentheses B1 plus B2. Have you ever thought very hard about where this might come from? Well, let's get, let's distribute this one half times the height inside and think about where this could have come from. Now, this is the formula I definitely want you to know. But if I distribute the one half h inside, that would be one half, and I'm going to put the b1 first times h plus one half and then b2 times h. To me, that's easier to look at. So now let's focus on this. Now, we use the distributive property over addition, right? So we are allowed to do that. And what actually happened in the development of this formula, they used that backwards. It's noticed that each of these terms has a one-half h in it. So they pulled that out front, and then they're left with b1 plus b2 in parentheses. But what am I trying to say? Okay, so one-half b1h, one-half bh, what's that? That's a triangle, right? 
Oh, one half B two H. That's a different triangle, right? It's triangles with different bases. Check this out. So the one half B one H. That is that triangle. Right there, right? Because that's B one. And then the formula is the one half that is part of a triangle, and then the height. So that is one half B one H. But what about one half B two H? Well, look at B two. Okay. Now notice the altitude for that triangle comes outside. Remember that's perfectly okay. That's what happens when you have an obtuse angle in your triangle. The altitude comes outside, but that's still the area of this triangle right here. So it's just two different triangles you're calculating the area of. You're adding them together to get the area of a trapezoid. Love that. Okay, folks, find the area of each of these trapezoids. It is time for you to pause the video. Promise me you will. Pause the video, calculate these two areas, and come back, and let's make sure you know how to do this. Okay, so you did it, right? You did, right? If you didn't pause it, <laughs> go do them now. All right, so I'm going to trust that you did this. So this is area is equal to one-half B1 plus B2 times the height. Notice I accidentally put it in the back because that's the way it's stuck in my head, the height. But one half H B1 plus B2 is the same story. Now, so I've got one half. Let's go ahead and put the height in the front. What's the height? That's the four centimeters. And then you have base one plus base two. Does it matter the order you add them in? Like the commutative property of addition says I can add 12 centimeters plus 16 centimeters, or I can add 16 centimeters plus 12 centimeters. It doesn't matter. Now, what I am going to go ahead and do, this is multiplication, although this is addition. It's in parentheses. We need to add first, right? Order of operations. Y'all know the trick, right? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So, parentheses first, then any exponents you have, multiplication and division left to right, division and multiplication <laughs> division, I said it right, right? Addition and subtraction left to right. So anyway, right here, I can cancel this 2 and this 4, and that makes it a 2. So it makes your numbers a little easier to deal with. So now I have 2 centimeters times 12 plus 16 gives me 28 centimeters. And then 2 centimeters times 28 centimeters is what? 56, careful here, centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared, right, or square centimeters, if you prefer that. Okay, so let's look at our, our confidence answer here. There it is, 56 centimeters squared. No explanation, nothing. There it is for you. Okay, how did the second one go? If you haven't done it, you need to pause it right now and handle it. Okay, did you notice they didn't give you a height? Uh-oh, so what do you do? Does that mean you can't do it? Does that mean they didn't give you enough information? Absolutely not, right? They did give us enough information. We know that this angle right here is 45 degrees. Happens to be on the other side as well. How in the world is that going to help? How is that going to help, y'all? If that angle is 45 and that's 90, what's this angle up here? So 45 plus 90 is 135. Remember, triangles add to be what? Yeah, 180 degrees. So 180 minus 135. This guy is also 45 degrees. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. Remember, any times your base angles match, then these lengths are the same. So I'm getting real busy in here. So this length and this length are the same. And of course, I have the same story going on over here. So this height and this length here are the same. And then you might be thinking, well, Miss Wilson, um, we don't have any of those down there, do we? Well, let's use our noggin, right? We've got two centimeters at the top, which means straight down, that is two centimeters. And then you did notice that this is eight centimeters across the entire base. We don't know each of those measurements, but we do know if two is across the top, then two is across the bottom, straight down. So what does that mean this piece and this piece is? 
Well, 8 minus 2 is 6, and we split that 6 in half. So there's 3 centimeters here, 3 centimeters here. So what's our height? Aha, 3 centimeters. That's what that 45 degrees was all about. Is so we could determine the side lengths, and the height is the same thing as this part of the base of the triangle because we have base angles that match, which means the sides match because you have an isosceles triangle. All right, so my formula is area is one half the height times b1 plus b2 so one half my height remember is three centimeters times base one doesn't matter which one we do i'm going to do the eight centimeters plus base two base two is the two centimeters i keep going so it's going to be one half times three centimeters and eight plus two is ten centimeters now three times ten is 30 divided by this 2 right here, that's 15, I'm going to write it over here, 15 centimeters squared. Don't forget that square because you multiplied centimeters times centimeters. 15 centimeters squared, and let's look at our t confidence answer. There we go, all typed up, 15 centimeters squared. All right, how about the area of a regular polygon? Formula here. You need to commit this one to memory. You need to know this, that the area of a regular polygon is one-half A. They define A for us. That's like the altitude of a triangle times NS. Do you remember what NS was previously? NS we used for the perimeter of a regular polygon. That's the number of sides, okay, where S is the side length. So this P right here just represents perimeter. So you can either remember it's one half the altitude times the perimeter of the entire thing or one half A times NS, okay? And, and we'll do some problems like that, or at least you'll do some in the homework, okay? Uh, how about the area of a circle? So let me back up just real quick. I jumped in there way too quick. Why do you think this formula is what it is? One half, does it remind you anything? Like one half the base times the height? The area of a triangle, right? Your, your regular polygon is just going to be split into a bunch of triangles. How many? Depends on how many sides you have, right? It would be in triangles. So that's why it's one half the altitude, and the altitude for every triangle is the same. One half A times NS. That's going to be true for every triangle, okay? I jumped away. I jumped away too quickly. How about the area of a circle? Well, its area equals pi r squared. Now the Greeks approximated the area of a circle by taking polygons and increasing the number of sides. That's interesting, isn't it? So if you make these side these side lengths smaller and smaller and smaller that would increase the number of sides and that approached this formula which is area is equal to pi r squared that's another commit to memory i'm hoping it's already there this is a new formula for you and you need to know how to use it in the homework frequently they ask you to leave your answer in terms of pi okay well, the area of a sector is just part of the area of a circle. So notice it still uses the formula of a circle. So area equals to pi r squared. It's still there. This is your part of a circle. So if you were looking at a, say, a five degree sector, then you would have just area is equal to five degrees out of 360 degrees. That's just a fraction of your circle times pi r squared, and hopefully you're given r. And again, a lot of these answers you would leave in terms of pi unless you needed a decimal approximation, and then you could use 3.14 as pi, or you needed a fraction 22 over 7, we could use as pi as well. All that remains is just a couple of homework problems to help you out. It says find the area of the shaded staircase in the drawing. Okay, so we have a drawing over here, and we're trying to find the area of that bright blue shaded region over there. Notice they didn't give us a single number. This is why I picked this homework problem. I thought you might appreciate a little bit of help with it. What do you think we should do? Well, 
what kind of shapes do we have, right? We have triangles, okay? So that means you write the formula for a triangle. Write something, okay? So area is equal to one-half the base times the height, okay? So let's just take a look at this one triangle that I've outlined in red there. All right, let's see if we can write that out in terms of the information they gave us. So I know that area is one half. What's the base for our triangle? It's right here. You see me, you see me drawing over it. Isn't that this value right here? They just called it B. Yes, yes indeed. They just called it B. So the B in our formula is the same as the B in our problem. But now height is not just height. How do we define the height here? Well, check it out. The height, they're saying H is defined to be from the bottom down here all the way to the top. All of that is H. Okay, so I've got four triangles in here. So this height, and by the way, that is the height of my triangle. Is it right triangle? Thank goodness, so I don't have to calculate a height. It's right there. But it's H split up into four pieces. So how about the height is H over 4 for this one? H over 4 for this one. H over 4 for this one. You get it? H over 4. I just took that distance and divided it up into four equal parts. Okay. So my height is H over 4. So the area, this is, remember, is of one triangle is equal to one half times B times H over 4. Well, can't I multiply this denominator times this denominator? I'm like, yep. So that's going to be BH, still in the numerator, over 8. But that's one triangle. How many triangles do I have? I have four of these things. So I'm going to multiply 4 times this BH over 8. And you know what's going to happen is I can cancel this 4 and this 8, and that's going to leave me with 2. So the area of the shaded part is going to be BH over 2. Okay, so the area is, again, we're going to have um, BH over 2. And now what's the units? Remember, it's area, so it's something squared. Well, they didn't give us that, so likely this is going to say unit squared. I can't really scroll with that, but pretty sure that's what that's going to be. So I hope that helps you out in the homework. I got one more. All right, here we go. If a 120-degree sector of a circle has a radius of 6 centimeters, what is the perimeter of the sector? Okay. Now, this might refer more to what we did in the last section, but I wanted you to see this. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to draw a circle or close to it just to give you a visual of what we got going on here. It says if a 120 degree sector of a circle has a radius of six centimeters. Okay, so this guy right here is six centimeters. Now, I'm just estimating 120 degrees. I'm just going to put it right there. So that is 120 degrees. Okay, and they want us to find the perimeter of the sector. So perimeter means this right here, we know that is arc length, right? But that's not all. They don't want us just to find the arc length. They want us to find that perimeter. If we were to walk around that, how far would we walk? All right, so we need our arc length formula. So remember, arc length is equal to... It's pi r theta divided by 180 degrees. Remember, we talked about that. We even talked about where the formula came from. Okay, so for our problem, we have pi. Remember, most of your answers, you just leave pi in there. R, what's r? It's the radius. That's 6 centimeters. So 6 centimeters. R theta is 120 degrees divided by... 180 degrees. We need to simplify that. Okay, so that's going to give me the 6 divides into 180, 30 times 30 divides into 120, 4 times, so 4 pi. Again, if, if you didn't catch that, don't worry, you can do that on your calculator. Now remember, that's just your arc length. That's just your L is equal to 4 pi. So that's this outside part. 
but the whole perimeter, what are we going to do? So I'm going to say perimeter equals, oh, by the way, what's the units too? So over here, I left my centimeters off, but notice that's the only units over here. The degrees cancel, and then centimeters is left. So that's 4 pi centimeters. So for the full perimeter, I already have the arc length, which is 4 pi centimeters. And I need to add that to this piece down here, which is 6 centimeters, and add that to this piece over here, which is also 6 centimeters. So probably the easiest way to write the answer is the 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 4 pi, and then put the centimeters on the outside because it applies to all of that. And that is your arc length. If you feel like I shorted you on examples for finding like the area of a circle or the area of a polygon or anything like that, let me know and I'll add it in. Um, I, I just feel like that you could probably do those without me slowing the video down, helping you out with those. But I'll be glad to add any videos to help you along the way. I hope you have a wonderful day. This does conclude section 3-2 and you come back and we'll talk about 3-3 soon. Have a good one.